Kayla and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome today I'm going to be planning the second week of March in my bullet journal but first here's a glance at what last week turned out to look like after the pen and how my habits and mood tracker are going if you have not yet seen my March bullet journal setup or last week's plan with me, I'll have those linked down below for you to go watch. This week I am using my March monthly kit and I'm also just reusing some of my pastel and white four leaf clover sticker sheets so that I can kind of use them up and not waste more paper and my five mild liner colors of the rainbow for this spread. All of the stickers will be linked down below and you can find them on my Etsy shop. For this week, I wanted to keep it interesting and try a different layout, so I did a horizontal one rather than a vertical one. At the top, I am doing a to-do list right now, which will be split into two, so I have room for many to-dos on this section. And then I'm going to be making a similar looking layout for each day, where the first section will be the daily to-do list, and the second section will be for me to kind of journal, write down my gratitude for the day, or anything like that. I am using my four leaf clovers on the March monthly kit sheet to go ahead and mark down the day and for the to-do list I'm just using one of the blank ones and then I'm using my Tombow hard tip food and Oske brush pen to go ahead and letter in to do. Now I'm going ahead and continuing this down the rest of the days of the week, going in the Roy G. Biv pattern of the rainbow and using those March monthly kit stickers with the numbers on them. Since I don't have much to explain in this week's plan with me, I decided I would kind of use this as a get to know me or just a little chit chat part of the video. I am Kayla, I'm 23 years old, I'll be 24 in January, and I'm currently a third year graduate student in Bloomsburg University for audiology. I will be graduating in 2023 with my doctorate of audiology, and I got into the field of audiology because I was born hearing impaired and I wear hearing aids on both of my ears. So it's just been something I've been super passionate about because I have personal experience and I believe that's going to really make it a good thing for me to be in the field so that I can share my experience with other people going through similar things and help them out using my own personal experiences. I am currently looking for a place in Texas because my fourth year externship is going to be in Texas. This week I'm actually going to Texas on Thursday and I'm staying until Sunday. So I have tours lined up as well as sort of a meet and greet with my fourth year externship. Now, an externship is when you go out and you do clinical experience and you don't have any classes for the fall and spring semesters, just for the summer semester, at least in my program. And it's just a year for you to get clinical hours so that you can get your certification as well as be supervised to learn how to practice as an audiologist. And I'm going to be in an ENT location, meaning I will be working with otolaryngologist or ear, nose, and throat doctors. And I really like the medical setting for audiology because you get to see many different types of disorders and etiologies and I also will still be able to form connections with my patients and make sure that I am giving them the best services that I can. 
Now for those of you who don't know what audiology is, it is basically the study of sound and how our ears and brain interpret it. It, for me, means that I am going to be working with patients who have hearing-related disabilities, such as hearing loss or any other pathologies. These also include auditory processing disorders and balance or vestibular disorders. Many people don't know that balance is actually partially controlled by the inner ear where our vestibular system is and I think that it's one of the coolest sections of audiology because you can really evaluate the inner ear by looking through the eyes and making recordings of eye movements and then you can help patients rehabilitate their balance through vestibular rehabilitation therapy Another cool thing that we do is ABR testing or auditory brainstem response testing and this is a way of testing someone's hearing without them having to respond. So this is often done on newborns for newborn hearing screenings or you can sedate children if behaviorally you're having a hard time getting responses from them and it's a good way to diagnose the type of hearing loss and the degree of hearing loss until you're able to get a behavioral observation or a behavioral audiometry. Once you are able to diagnose someone with a hearing loss, there are many different treatments or many different management um, options one being hearing aids, which are devices that help amplify sound and help your brain get more access to the sound. Another thing is cochlear implants, and these are implanted into your cochlea, which is where the sense of hearing organ is, and this bypasses the outer and the middle ear, so your outer ear that you can see, your ear canal, and those three tiny bones, and it stimulates the cochlea directly. There are specific criteria that people have to meet in order to be candidates for cochlear implants, but those are a really cool option. Other implantable options include bone anchored hearing aids or Bajas, and these are osseo integrated devices that vibrate the skull. Again, they bypass the outer and middle ear and stimulate the cochlea directly. You can also get auditory brainstem implants, which will bypass the outer, middle, and cochlea and will stimulate the brainstem where the auditory pathway lies. So there's many different options for amplification for patients with hearing loss. We also can do oral rehabilitation for patients with hearing loss or for patients with processing disorders, specifically known as auditory processing disorders, and that is when and the signal is being sent to the brain, but not properly. So your brain is getting the acoustic stimuli, but it's not making sense or not processing the stimuli correctly. There's different test batteries you can use to diagnose this, or you can do oral rehabilitation to help them compensate for their processing disorders. Lastly, there are many balance disorders caused by the inner ear. There is one way to test it called a VNG, and this records eye movements, and these eye movements allow us to understand how the inner ear is functioning. We can also do something called a rotary chair, and this also records eye movements, but the patients are in kind of a, a chair that feels like you might be on a roller coaster, and it makes the patients complete different tasks while the chair is moving, again recording eye movements to see how their inner ear is responding. You can also do something called CDP, or Computerized Dynamic Posturography, and this allows us to look into the patient's vestibular ocular reflex and also examine how their body is working in tune with their eyes and their inner ear. And like I said, you can use vestibular rehab therapy to help rehabilitate these patients, or you can also perform different treatments depending on what the cause of the balance disorder is. So that was just a little bit about me and about the field I'm going into. I hope that you found it interesting. If you have more questions about it, let me know in the comments below. 
Now I am just finishing up my spread by decorating with these four leaf clovers. Like I said, I wanted to try to use up the rest of the stickers that I had instead of printing a brand new sticker sheet, so I am incorporating some of these white four leaf clovers. I used these in the beginning of my bullet journal setup for my habit trackers so that I can color them in according to my mood, but you can also use them like I am here, or you can just get the white ones rather than getting the colorful ones and then color them in using your own color palette. They are a matte white sticker paper so you can use any writing utensil including colored pencils, crayons, markers, paint, anything like that. it for today's video i hope you enjoyed if you did please thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe also check out my instagram where i post more bullet journal content and look at my etsy shop if you're interested in purchasing any of the stickers i showed or other ones i'll see you all later bye